exciting. No. All right. Well, we only have four folks, so we'll probably wait a little while before we yep. um, start. I was even given chair slides. So. Hello, folks. Hey, John. Well, it took me like it took me like three minutes to just find the meeting. After I found the meeting, I had to go to Meet Echo first and log in there, and then from there I found your link, and then I had to come here, and I had to give it browser permissions like two times, and even now I had to. Oh yes. Luke, I hope that baby has acknowledged acknowledged the note well. Yeah, I, I think I think I think your secrets are fine. <laughs> it's not that our secrets. If the baby says anything interesting, then oh yeah, yeah, you're right. It could be part of the standard. Yeah. Right, and right. I'm, I'm, so they have to disclose our PR. I was going to say that we've got bigger issues. I think if we're, we're <laughs> start listening to the baby. <laughs> Uh. What is this mascot? This is you, Alan? Uh, we used AI to generate a mascot for a virtual team, since these are virtual interims, not hosted in any city. Nice. Uh, yeah. So this is what we're using the like surplus electricity of the universe for. Clearly, <laughs> clearly put to good use. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm, I'm sort of missing some people that I would expect to be here, but um, I'm going to get going at 905 in, I'm going to give them 15 seconds and then roll. Can someone like maybe hop over to Slack and see if they need help with the link or something? I can send a link over. Yeah. Um, uh, Colin said he's not going to be able to make it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on your location, everyone. Welcome to our uh, virtual interim. Uh, we already discussed the origin of our mascot. Um, so we'll just get right into it. Uh, this is the note well. Uh, it covers the policies by which we agree to uh, abide while we're participating in IETF work. And it covers important things like how we treat each other and how we handle intellectual property rights. So type it into your favorite search engine and have a read if you have not. Uh, OK, so this is our strange like hybrid meeting. So uh, we're going to use the Google Meet queue. We're going to use the Zulip slash Meet Echo chat. Uh, and yeah, hopefully we've got it all figured out by now. Okay, agenda. Uh, after this, we're going to hand it over to Ian, as we normally do on these weekly calls, uh, and talk about the um, priority PR, which uh, is the, at least going to be one of the outputs from last week's uh, in person slash hybrid interim. Um, and then Martin has something he wants to share if there's time allowing regarding forwarding preference. And uh, yeah, does anybody want to bash this agenda? Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, scribes. So we need a scribe. Uh, I haven't yet popped open the note doc in Meet Echo. Um, 
but uh, could we have a volunteer to take notes? The meeting is recorded. We don't necessarily need a full transcription of everything everybody says, mostly just recording the action items, which we do go back and look at sometimes. It's important to know, like, we agreed that we're going to make this change or something is like important to write down. Especially if you did not scribe at the interim last week and you haven't scribed for one of these, then it's probably close to your turn. Or if you scribed for a very early one of these, maybe it's your turn again. Uh, Jordy, I hate to pick on you, but are you, can you take minutes? Okay, I did it once, just for the record, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, do you know where the, to put them? I can yeah. try to find it. Uh, Hold on, let me, um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, let's see. Uh, it will not be perfect, but... <laughs> Good. Okay, note-taking tool. Uh, okay, yeah. Open notepad. Okay. All right, you got it. A question. Okay. Yeah, what's up, John? Uh, this thing has this thing has closed captioning capabilities. You might want to use that. If it's going to be imperfect notes anyway. I think that the recording will automatically have a transcription. Is that right, Ian? Yeah. I, I turned on transcription. I did not turn on closed captioning. I found the transcriptions to be somewhat inaccurate. And I'm concerned that the captions could end up being a distraction because we'll end up just saying silly things and like laughing hilariously at how AI has really not made much progress. Um, why don't we give it a, give a roll to the transcription? And if, if the transcriptions yep. start becoming reasonably good, we can both turn on captions as well as um, stop having, I guess, a, a scribe or have let's, a scribe that won't cover it very, very high level. Hmm? I've got, let's talk later because we should consider using like, if, if you're able to use Gemini, Ian, then we could like throw the recording through Gemini and pull out like things out of it. I found that to be very useful in the past. Okay. okay. Nice. Um, and uh, I, I will try to keep an eye on the chat uh, and relay comments as necessary. And that's all I got. So I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to Ian. Sure. Thank you. Um, thank you for folks for um, reviewing the priority PR. Um, and for, for all the comments, um, I saw that there was a last round of comments, particularly from Luke uh, yesterday. I had not seen those until a few moments ago. Um, I think I want to make sure that I hit the key issues here first. Um, there's a number of things about like naming and like making sure the details are clarified. And I think I can work those out without too many problems just based on the comments I see. But um, there's this question of like the publisher group order in subscribe OK. So uh, the group uh, that Luke mentioned, the my understanding in the last version, and I will pull up slides, actually. I can pull up slides. Hold on for a second. Um, oh, no. Oh, did that work? Oh, no. Oh, I did the wrong, the bad thing. Oh. Mm. Mm. Is it one of the decks from last week, Ian, that I might have access to? Yeah, I... Okay, sorry. Just... There's two buttons. One's bring the call here, and one's just present this tab, and I accidentally like... Okay, there we go. All right. We should be all set now. Everything's back now, I think. All right. Um, so, uh, the, I thought at the end, yeah, day two, at the end, we ended up with nothing in subscribe OK, only things on the beginning of streams in the header. Is that, is my understanding correct? Luke? We, we had a quick chat, like in the lightning round, where um, the order can be in subscribe OK. It's fine. Um, you do need the order. Otherwise, a relay doesn't know if it should do ascending or descending uh, upstream. 
And if it always does ascending, that's head of line blocking at the first mile. So we do need a way of telling the relay what to do. And you can't put the order in every stream. It just kind of seems silly. You're saying we do need the publisher to specify its preferred yeah, initially the Cullen slide said it was always ascending, but that, that's just going to cause headline blocking. Like, that's not going to work. Um, that's always going to be, like, reliable. The broadcaster will always deliver in ascending mode, so we'll never be able to skip during congestion at first mile congestion. Sorry for the baby. Here. So to, to clarify, in order to do that, we need to change the current framing. So having the subscriber specified that the delivery order is optional. Is that correct? No, the, the publisher needs to specify something so relays can subscribe using it. I guess that's, that's my clarification, which is that if if the subscriber has to specify this, and the subscriber is always going to take preference, why does the publisher need to specify it ever? I don't. W w when when will that be used? Because it's just like the track priority. First mile, we'll use a sub subscriber priority and use a. Oh, sorry, last mile, we use the subscriber priority and subscriber order. But we agreed that every other hop should not use the subscriber priority and should not use the subscriber order because it could be a conflict. Uh, right. So uh, what I do see. you do for the other hops? Is like the question. You need a publisher order too. Okay, so you're saying that the, the 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 text that we have now that says the subscriber always specifies a priority, but relays, and I forget the exact language of the text, is like basically like relays really should set everything to the same priority unless they have a really good reason not to. But then we have this other field, which is like, what order do you want things in? And that needs to be optional so that a relay would just set it, would always have that blank if it didn't know, or if, I guess it could set it if like all the, same thing we were saying before, like if all the clients set it to ascending, then it would it could send it to ascending logically, but if some set to ascending and some set to descending, it just has to say like, I don't know, like you pick. Is that is, is that what we're thinking? Yeah, and even if it doesn't specify one, it still needs to know it because it needs to obey it. It's kind of the problem. So I can't just say, give me whatever. It actually needs to be told, do I send the yes, ascending yes. or descending? Yeah. So it needs to be in subscribe, OK, or track status, or every stream header. But it, it, that, that, it's a Boolean that needs to be somehow sent from the publisher up, upwards. OK, sort of I think I understand what you're saying. Right. Um, okay. John? I can fix that. Yeah. Then, OK. I, I think I'm still a bit confused about exactly what the and and maybe some of this that this that could be some history to this so um uh, the i thought this was symmetric in the sense of the fact that uh every hop would be a publisher and a subscriber the subscriber would would would, would offer a preference if you are a relay you know you're a relay so why would you not simply say um the equal priorities or equal preference but this isn't about the level this is about the group order do you want the lowest groups first or the highest groups first yeah, right basically. you're sending in the sending order right that's what we're talking about yep um, yeah the, the use case uh let me back up a little bit is you have a relay somebody who asked for a vod so they want everything in reliable head of line blocking mode whereas somebody wants live stream which they want it to to the oldest first they want to skip and how do you deduplicate those requests? Is what this sorry, is. But, sorry, sorry. Just to just to stick with this one, not the use case, right? But if the subscriber simply said was able to say don't care, wouldn't the publisher simply publish in the priority it wants to anyway, and not the priority, the 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 order it wants to send in? So why do you need to express this on the wire? Because the uh, the the relay needs to obey that public uh, that priority at each hop. So if there's congestion last mile or you know at some other hop, it needs to know what order to send that. Otherwise, it's undefined and it has to send an undefined order too. Under what condition do you expect the re the the end subscriber to know, but the relay to not know? I guess um, maybe it's, it's the case that the relay is not actually the application itself. 
It's just yeah, any, exactly. The, 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 the relay just, doesn't know if the application wants skipping or L1 blocking. Okay, like okay fair enough. It's just a relay in the middle which has no application logic in it. So it has to use this information to figure out how to send. All right. Yeah. Um, Jordi? Jordi? Yeah, sorry. This is uh, so. This is new uh, for me since I missed the, the context. So, what are we saying here is that we are going to use uh, two priorities. If I uh, please uh, correct me if I misunderstood, the publisher priority and the subscriber priority. And the use case for this it would be that it's a live stream that the publisher is sending. Uh, uh, the most important is the most recent, but the, some subscribers could also want live stream, so it will use the same priority. So in the subscription, will tell, I want the more recent first. And another subscriber could do live rewind, so a few minutes uh, ago. And for that one, it will be subscribing as, I want subscribing priority, I want the most, the oldest first. Oldest first. Is that a good summary? I, th I think that's what we're talking about, yeah. OK, perfect. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I, I was following. Thank you. Yeah, and again, this is um, not the priority number. The delivery, what I had previously been calling delivery order, just like, sort of wrong order. John, you have your actual hand up. There you go. I do I have my actual hand up and my virtual one too. Um, I was actually just writing a comment there, and you changed the PR, so 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 I'm behind on that. But um, Ian, I think this should be called, and and we can take this off onto the PR itself. But I think it shouldn't be called delivery order. I think it should be called send order because it confuses things. It's effectively not, it's not the order in which you expect things to be received. Sure. It's the order in which you want to send things. I'll, I'll, I'll do it on the PR, but I just want to raise it here quickly. Yeah, that's that's fair one. I mean, yes, I understand there's a subtle difference between delivery order and... Okay, so um, let me just, I'm gonna try to summarize what I think mm -hmm. the proposal is, and then if somebody wants to uh, like say that we shouldn't do it, I'll give you a chance to speak against it. So the proposal is to modify the PR to indicate the publisher's group send order in subscribe OK and make the subscribe order optional. I believe that is the proposal. OK, if anybody thinks that's going to be a problem, can you say something now? Yeah, I was. I, I don't think it needs to be optional. Um, I think it could just be like the track priority, but I, it also doesn't really matter. It's it seems different than the track priority, where like in track priority, if I if everybody sends seven, it means everything's equivalent to me. You pick, but this is like, do I want it ascending or descending? So if everybody says ascending, it doesn't tell the other side you pick. It says like I want ascending. So I, I think it has to actually have like sort of a it has to be a tri state. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I think it, I think that's. Ascending, descending, no preference or something. Yeah, I mean, I could make it. Yes, I, I could make it an enum. I mean, that might be the easiest thing. And just yeah, like, zero is no preference or something, right? I mean, that that's probably at least then it's explicit that you're, um, you're explicitly stating that you do not have a preference opposed to uh, something else. So that's probably the easiest thing to do anyway. So the idea here. Um, just so I understand this is that the this is the subscribe order is the same as the delivery order which I'm prefer which in in the PR is that correct Ian? Yes. Okay. It's 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 the ascending descending lowest group highest group concept. Got it. Got it. You wanna, so yep. yeah, I mean I don't if the whole thing is optional why do we need to have a don't care? I understand that. I mean if you don't send it I would imagine that the interpretation would be obviously that the sender doesn't care. I. I'm suggesting it, given how often this is going to be used, that I just, this is like how to spell it on the wire. I'm just saying making it an EM with three values might be clearer than having an optional param um, yeah. in this particular case because it's so like frequently used. Makes, Makes sense. sense. That's, yeah. Look, look. Yeah, I was going to say just a naming thing for that might make it clearer as well. We have the track priority, and I would say this is the group order. So they're they're both part of the same prioritization point. It's just, are you is it the scope to a track or is it to, to groups within a track? Um, and yeah, I don't really have an opinion on on if you have any know or perhaps. Cool. Is it group? Because it seems in the PR it looks like it's objects. It's okay. technically groups. It is groups. It's groups. Yep. 
objects are always sent ascending within, yeah, and within a group. The PR technically it's a stream priority, not really track priority, because it can be changed on every quick stream. Um, the publisher's priority can be changed in every quick stream, so it's a little weird. Right. I mean, I think okay. the, the priorities in ordering is, is different in some ways, but ultimately you're using the signaling for ordering and for priorities to decide what order to send in. So I think the PR is trying to do the job of describing how to send based on the group send order, that's what I'm going to call it, and the priorities. So are, are we closed down on this particular issue? Because the thing that Luke just brought up was another one of the comments on the PR that I think we should spend a minute or two discussing, because I have a slightly different interpretation. Okay. But, I'm 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 good on this issue. I think I, it's pretty straightforward. What I need to write. Okay. So what Luke just said is that like this is setting a priority of the stream. Versus, but the way I read the PR is that even though those things can change per stream, it's setting the priority of the track. Meaning, if I sent you two streams with priority one publisher priority one and one publisher priority two, every th so, that track from my relay will treat treat it sending from this track at the highest of those. It takes the max, the, the highest priority of all of those things for selecting from this track, and then I go to group order: is it ascending or descending? And then I go to object: always ascending. So I, that is how I interpret it, and. And it sounds like there's maybe a different interpretation that Luke has. But that, that is how I intended to write it is basically, I mean, in some sense, even though we're talking about prioritizing subscriptions uh, slash tracks, like at the end of the day, if the priority can change within a subscription, then it's really like what is the highest priority chunk of data you have to send across all subscriptions that are active is kind of. But conceptually, what that results in is kind of what you said, Alan, which is if you have something that's priority one and priority two, then um, the subscription, in order to make sure the priority one stuff gets written at the appropriate time, the subscription, quote unquote, needs to be treated as priority one, not priority two, until the priority one data has been flushed. Yeah, the, the weird thing about, about how I'm, that works is that like if I, let's say I have group, I set group order ascending, and then group one comes on a stream and it has priority Oh. Two, priority two, and then group two comes in, it has priority one. So that means that that priority is setting the track priority. So now that I've received, it's like, okay, this track is now priority one, but it's group A sending. So I will actually go and send the first group first, even though if I was just looking at the that priority number, that would seem strange. So you need to like, at least it, it took me, I was wrestling with this, I think on Thursday or Friday, and I was talking about it in Slack, and then I figured out that this is how I think it's supposed to work, but it's very strange, especially when you think about, like, you might be sending this priority on every group, but it is not the priority of the group. It is the priority of the track once you receive that thing. At least that's how I, or like, it is a it is one of the priorities of the track, and the actual priority of the track is the highest of all of the ones you have in flight. Okay, that's my sure. understanding anyway. So Luke? Yeah, it's 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 weird because what you're saying is basically if the, the priority of the stream doesn't match the order, then you get this weird behavior where it sends the it's, lower think, priority stuff first because the higher priority group kind of bumped it up. The number the in the stream header is not the priority of the stream. Well, it depends. So if if the uh, if you send the higher priority stream first, then that will bump the rest of the track priorities down again. And then another track will be sent instead, and then you'll get back to that that stream. So it creates this like, I get what you're saying. It's not really the track priority. It's not really the stream priority. It changes depending on the interaction of order and priority. Um, and I don't see any reason why you need that or why it even matters. It probably doesn't matter, honestly. Uh, it just it is a little weird. So, um, but I think. I think we do need to decide, and um, I, oh, Johnny, you're on the queue as well. So, so I think I I didn't fully understand the subtlety of what we're talking about, but um, until you just re-explained it to me verbally, Alan. So, thank you very much. So, we do need to decide: do we want to always send the highest priority data first in a subscription, even if it does not obey the group order? for the subscription, or do we will always want the group order to obey the priority number 
for the streams. I think those are the two things we're deciding between, right? Can you roll back to the slide with the algorithm on it? I can. Can I say one thing? Yeah, yeah go ahead. I just want to have this like in front of everybody. What I want to say is this, what's, what's on this slide actually, uh, but kind of on the slide, it's, 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 let me see if it's already there. It is there. Okay. Um, the unit that we need to select is an object. I think that's crucial and that's kind of, that's a little bit missing, but in terms of the algorithm, when you're choosing something to send, you're sending an object, you're not sending a group, you're not sending a track, you're sending an object always, no matter what you like. Luke, you're sending an object, I'm you're sorry. You're sending a stream that's mapping, you're sending a stream. Uh... No, you're sending data into a stream and that's an object. You're not sending anything else. Is there anything else all, you can send besides all an object? All data is objects or object right. headers. Right, so, so everything is fundamentally an object. Yes, you, so you're choosing an object. Now that object, you choose from that object will belong to a group and it will belong to a track. You're deciding how to fill those two numbers. That's what the algorithm gives you. So if you if you if you think of it as a two-dimensional array of objects with with uh, uh, track and group, then you're literally using this algorithm to select what the track and the group ID is, and then you choose the object based on your send order or whatever no not the send order then you just ascending order always right within a within a group so i think that that's that's maybe the the way to think about it because your selection algorithm is ultimately selecting an object to send and then you dump the object onto the onto the wire uh, that's what i was going to propose and i can help ian i can help uh, later today i can uh, write it up in this uh, i think that writing it up in this algorithmic way is probably uh, uh, better than descriptive yeah, I was going to go back and like do try to do an algorithmic pass once we got all the details sorted, and I thought mm -hmm. we were happy with them. But um, so just before we roll on to the rest of the queue, while the slide is up, I, I think the thing that is s subtly different in the PR that we're describing now that's not present on this slide is it says rank by subscriber priority. That's there. It says if equal rank by publisher priority. And the problem is that the publisher you may have more than one publisher priority for this track at one time in your send queue. And so the PR says it's ranked by the highest publisher priority you have in your send queue. Yes, that's what it says. That is for picking a track. And then right. you pick the group based on the group order. So that's what the PR, as I understand, that's what the PR says, and that's how it's different from what's on the slide. So that we can roll through Mo, Suhas, I think Victor, and then Luke. Uh, yes. Mo, I think. Oh. Um, yeah, so I'm wondering, can can we use priority instead of group order? Can 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 someone achieve the same thing just by having the priorities and not have a separate group order? Because you can just put the 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 groups in whatever priority you want. Not with only eight bits. Do they apply to the same things? Priority you, and order. You think there's more than 256 groups in flight? I think there's more than 256 groups total, and then like managing it when it wraps around is a huge pain and i question is there a use case where somebody wants to send groups in some arbitrary order that is neither ascending or descending and i struggle to find a use case there but anyway somebody else can weigh in if they're if that's actually something we need to support because that's input to this algorithm i mean it seems i mean i'm looking at the algorithm here and if you're trying to stick to that then the priorities are applied to tracks not to groups that is correct so you can't you can't replace that with the other um uh i think suhas was next but took their hand down um uh, i'll come in and then try to set up my network here uh not coming through give me a couple of seconds okay you want you want to go ahead to victor and come back to you yeah sounds good okay go ahead victor uh, I'm here mostly to categorically agree with Luke and disagree with Jenna. Priorities apply to streams and not to uh, objects. And the reason for that is usually like when you're really, uh, you don't really uh, like order stuff. Like you usually stuff arrives and like you just pass it down the stack. Uh, but usually like, if priority 
inversion happen upstream, that means like your video arrived before audience, that means you're kind of stuck with it and you can ask quick stack to reorder it. But uh, uh, there, it's like, uh, if you cannot pass your notion of priorities to quick stack, I, I don't think this will be particularly effective. Uh, so from that perspective, I, I think we should not try to think about things that like span uh, uh, pro span like like trying to reorder to reprioritize things on having things with different priorities on the same string. Uh, now uh, I I've been thinking like there. It is true that there are two ways to interpret like change in publisher priority, and one of them is if you see priority one on the earlier objects and then priority B as the later objects, you always use priority B and update. And the second one is, uh, well, you just, when you set your priorities, you just look at whatever there is, and they're actually mostly equivalent. It's just one of them, like, Reprioritization takes delay, so but I I think both are fine ways to implement this, and I I, I don't think it matters because the priority change is transient. So, uh, Victor, just to clarify, are you are you saying that one way to interpret priority is basically take the priority from the latest stream, for lack of a better word, or latest stream header, and say that's the current track priority because it's the most recent thing that has been published for that yeah. track and just say that's what it is until it changes because another stream arrives. Yeah, that's one approach. It's that is a very stable and easy to implement approach. Yeah, like and the, the other is that's e even all easier is like when you start forwarding a thing, you just look at the whatever is the header you're forwarding and then stop caring. Uh, th th those are both really simple and like easy to understand approaches, I think. Can I just make sure that I understand what the, so the proposal is that instead of the max priority, if you have more than one publisher priority, you select the track by the most recent the priority of the most recent stream? Well, so the one with the highest group ID. If... The, well, the okay, highest... The, well, okay, the highest group ID, yes. Okay, so the- Group object ID, depending on the stream mapping. The, yes. I'm gonna call that latest, whatever. Like, the, the, mo, the okay, the, yes. All right, I understand. So this is just, so that's, a dip, there's two different ways you could resolve when you have more than one publisher priority. You can either take the max or you could take the most most recent. Okay, thanks for helping me understand. Uh, Luke. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with Victor, of course. Um, that's effectively retroactive. If you take the highest uh, group ID, it means that it applies to older groups too, which I think is, is great. Um, but yeah, just to respond to Jenna, uh, I know everybody's least favorite argument, but implementation-wise, it, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, what you're saying with choosing the next group to send, object to send works if you have a quick library that effectively gives you a callback to say like, give me the next stream data now. But the way that at least like web transport and a lot of the quick libraries work is you queue up a giant send buffer and you just write it, you set the stream priority and it will go through and pick things. And part of my problem with actually picking based on the highest unsent uh, uh, object is that means you need a callback to know when a stream offset was sent, actually flush to the wire. So you can then reprioritize other streams accordingly. Right, like you need to know when data was sent to know that it's no longer that that's no longer the max priority, right? Um, or you need to know like acknowledgement data or something. Like it basically, quick libraries like to just put stuff to the send buffer instead of priority. And it'd be nice if we could just have something that you can implement like that. So I'd like to respond to this, and 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 Victor, I okay. disagree with you as but well. There's a queue. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought I was next in queue. Apologies. Uh, it looks like Victor and then Suhas and then you. Um, oh, I, I just lowered my hand. Okay, then it's Suhas and then John. Uh, I'm so sorry, I came in a bit late. I'm traveling. Um, I'm just trying to recollect and understand the discussions going on here. In, in a way, I, I tend to agree with Jana. Uh, um, at the end of the day, 
uh, Relay has an incoming quick connection and an outgoing quick connection. Uh, there are two different quick contexts. And, and a Relay application logic is the one that basically says, I, I got an object. Either it figures, uh, it figures out a canonical object, either looking at a stream header, uh, in, in uh, like stream group header in case of stream in, in the case of stream per group or in, in in case of the object header in case of stream per object for example and it figures out okay this object needs has a priority of seven and and it already has a mapping somewhere that says that map that maps to stream with who have for which the priority was set to seven if, if it's already sent so at the end of the day you're you're picking up an object and that object has a priority how we uh, how we set the priority on the object like in, from the canonical object perspective you have you can figure out what's object priority it can be same across all the groups all the tracks based on all the what the public publisher decides and then then it also knows that okay this object has to go on stream um, X Y Z because that's that's the priority mapped it mapped uh, mapped uh, at that point into um, I, I think I think if if we if I, on, on the case of where if you have multiple publisher priorities. Uh, pick, picking on, on track selection uh, 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 part of the algorithm where it picks the, the most important to be the highest or lowest that that, that makes total sense but uh, on on taking that object and putting it on the n number of streams to to fan out um, that that basically happens looking at the object priority it just happened to be in many cases it might happen just object priority directly maps to stream priority that's fine because that's, that's transfer mechanism that's providing but at the more clear the object has a priority and you look at the priority and you your code uh, has no knows the which stream it belongs to um uh, and, and it's it sends on the stream with the appropriate priority uh okay jana is next thanks um so i I want to raise this as, as a high level point. Um, basically, I think we need to separate, and this is I think what Sohas was talking about a little bit as well. We need to separate what we theoretically want from the mock perspective and how it gets implemented. I'm not saying that it's going to be perfect and it's fine to write out the approximation as most implementations will end up doing X and Y and so on, and that's fine. But when we keep talking about stream priority, I don't see stream priority on the slide, for example. And I don't understand what we keep saying when we keep saying stream priority. It confuses me. Partly because mock is not all in my head, but if I like, I, I can understand track priority. I can understand group ordering. I can understand objects. I don't understand what streams are, because that's a construct that we use for transporting these abstractions. If we have, if we can at least at the mock level say that this is the priority order we would like to have, and then in the mapping to streams we say this is the best way to do it for current implementations. I get that. I think that is reasonable, but. We should first identify and make sure that we have the mock prioritization correct. And that's what I was talking about when I send you send objects. You send objects onto streams, but you're still sending objects at the mock level. In terms of the fact that it gets buffered in streams and so on is a function of current implementations. And not every implementation will choose to do things that way. Um, uh, actually, that's not fair to say. Most implementations will choose to do it that way. but. Uh, I think that we can talk about the mapping there, but we should at least be clear about what the priorities of sending objects at the mock level are, because objects are what we what we work with at the mock level. Uh, okay, I had put myself in the queue and then it lowered my hand, I think, when I called on John, so I think I'm in the right spot. So just as an individual, uh, I think I want to plus what John just said, which is that we should decide what we want at the mock level, and then like if Quick needs to adapt, in some way, like hopefully there's a straightforward mapping to most quick implementations. If they're like, but I, I think we should, we should if, like going back to some of the presentations from last week, like we need to be able to say what the order is of the data we want. Like if we, once we do that, then we can like work backwards, like get what we need. Um, I also think that based on what I've heard here, like I definitely think that max is the max of the um, priority is the wrong choice when you have more than one publisher priority. I think latest is the right choice because if you want to ever wanted to lower, like say you had two where A was before B and then the publisher's like, oh no, no, now B is before A, but then they would basically end up being equivalent because they both like the max of both is equal. So which is not what you want, right? So if you wanted to actually like raise one and lower another, like you have to take latest, not max. So um, I guess that would be my, so like we're, we, we, we moved a little bit away from the PR and a little bit into like high level abstractions, if we can come back to a little bit to like what in the PR needs to change for you for you, us to be able to merge it. Um, I guess my strawman proposal is that we change the max of to latest of 
And then is there anyone who can't live with that? Um, so uh, I'll roll on to Victor Ian Suas Luke. Did, Victor, did you want to ask that okay. now or did you want to? Well, um, is my co chair available for a consultation? <laughs> <laughs> what we should do? Should we just take a show of hands here and like, uh, it, it, can P if we just change if we made that one change to the PR, are people happy or do people want more changes or should we drain the queue first? Can, or maybe can anyone speak up if if that's not at least acceptable to them or? Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's you know, let's let's um. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm all for taking the temperature before we go through you know, another five minutes of comments. Okay, so uh, should we do a little like how you want to do like a little poll thing? You want to do like should we do or how, how should we do? Just ask like, whoever objects to talk now. Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Right. If you if you object, uh, so let's just briefly clear the queue. So, and then if you want, and enter the queue, if you want to say that the latest priority is n incorrect or not going to work for you. Luke? It's the, just to clarify, Alan, or, or the, the proposal here is that the uh, when there are multiple publisher priorities, the one that you pick uh, would be what's been seen latest on on on, on a given track or an object or a group of the, order for I mean, probably. since the priorities will come per forwarding preference unit, uh, right. Yeah. Like whichever the one, the forwarding preference unit that has the highest group number and object number, that's the priority for the track. Okay. I don't see anybody jumping to speak against that. Cool. I can write that up. I think okay. that's implemented. Is there a, what else? And I'm sorry if there are people who wanted to opine, but like just in terms of the PR, what else in the PR needs? Do people feel like so we already we talked about uh luke's case about the publisher being able to set the a default uh group order and making an optional for the um for the subscriber not to specify group order if it would like to default to the, the publisher's group order i think we've resolved this case of what if there's multiple publisher priorities to the same track is there anything else yep. people feel like they needs to change in the pr before it can be landed editorial stuff could just go in the pr I, th I think I had one comment I would like to at least discuss or, or at least give me, tell me this is the way it works. That's fine. Uh, it's the one, uh, the comment I had was on, we had like two, this is the point to, to Will's point, right? Where, when, how do you identify, I want all these things to be same priority versus uh, I'm putting all the priorities to be same number, but use the publisher priority instead. Okay. We did discuss that last week. And I I think the outcome of that discussion was that we were willing to, f no one could make a convincing use case for why you wanted to say, as a subscriber, these things are equal, but I don't want the publisher to break ties. Yeah. But so, uh, if, you, so if, you, if, the public, if the subscriber says it's equal, you're also saying the publisher gets to break the tie rather than it really has to be equal. Um, so, if there's people now who think that we that wasn't the right call, or if I'm if I'm misremembering what the group decided, like let's go through that. No. I think that's what the group said. I um, but I can there's I can also add editorial text. I think Sue House was also asking for that about to like basically say if you always wanted to use the publisher's preference, here is what you should do, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think uh, the one thing that was missing was probably the clarification text. Text saying that uh, how can a subscriber express I don't care. I I don't know how to set, but follow what the publisher sets. And and also, um, I think we also need to have at some point uh, some clarification saying that what it constrains a subscriber to do or not to do at some point because uh, it does not let a publisher to set equal priorities if they really want it because it's. Because it always ends up breaking the die. I just, I just, if you go with that, yeah, whatever we decide, that's fine. But we need to put that in text in some format. I think you did. You just say it always lets the. No, I'm it? saying that there are two options, right? Like, I, like I think the 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 so way forward, I'm 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 hearing from the group is that like we, if if the subscriber sets all the uh, priorities to be same, then the publisher is the one that does the tie breaking. That's fine, but also we should uh, we should write that in the text which is missing today, and also uh, along with that another text that should go is saying that this would not let a publisher to individually uh, a, a publisher a, a subscriber to say I want all of them uh, all of this track to be of same. Okay, yeah, I think you said publisher the first time around, but you meant subscriber. Oh, There's yeah. no way for the subscriber to say like 
to completely override that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mo, Mo. And Luke, yeah. Um, I, I have a little confusion about what I think everybody was just agreeing to, to accept that uh, the latest object in a track determines the priority. The example that I gave during the interim about temporal scalability, the solution people proposed was, well, then just do object, uh, you know, string per object. So if you do that, then you're going to have different objects of different priorities within the same track. And so some of them are going to be lower, lower uh, priority intentionally. And that means that track would be starved even for its higher priority stuff because the lower priority, most recent uh, V frames are going to be the ones evaluated by this algorithm. And so the track will be skipped because it has recent low priority data. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how that actually works for an algorithm that has tracks with multiple priorities in it. I don't think the latest priority is the intent of the application. Why is it modulating priorities in the first place within a track? It must be doing it for a reason. And I don't think the reason is that the most recent one is the is switching to this. The whole track is not switching to this priority. This object was this priority. Yeah. Um, Mo, I, I agree that. Uh, actually, can I upload one to say, I think there might be two different use cases floating around about changing the priority of a publication during the publication. One of them is Mo's situation where potentially, um, you know, different parts of a track have different priorities because some of them are the base layer and some are enhancement layers. Um, and then the other is the, I want to make this track higher priority now, whether it's because it's the focus of the video call or something like that. Basically like something about the publication as, as a whole has changed that now makes this a higher or lower priority uh, at this moment. I think those are two different use cases. And so like, I'm just gonna put that out. Anyway, Luke, go for it. Yeah, so first thing I want to bring up is um, everything we're talking about uh, with these priorities are only when the subscriber says it's a tie. It's just a tiebreaker. So I think temporal scalability, if you do want to do it within groups, which I think is is not the way to do it, that doesn't, that's just incompatible with what we're describing, uh, letting the subscriber choose priorities, basically. Uh, again, this publisher priority is just meant to be a tiebreaker between tracks if the subscriber says they're equal. Um, I think we could, if, if it would help the discussion, I think for temporal scalability, I would really like to just talk about layers as a concept. Like you could think of a group as broken up into two layers, like, and they are separate priorities. Is it really what we're saying with temporal scalability? Um, and I think it's just better to set them as separate tracks because then you can subscribe to them and prioritize them separately. Uh, and I think if you try to put them inside the same group, then you just have this like, they try to break out of their envelope, which is part of the problem and why we have priorities changing all the time. So, I mean, I'm, I know I'm being very uh, strong about this, but I, I think if you're going to do temporal scalability, you're going to do SVC, it, it has to be separate tracks. I think otherwise it just, run, it just doesn't work with sub subscriber priorities. Can, can I just respond real quick, Luke? Um, th th that, that's, been, that's been the thoughts in the past too, but every time anyone actually did it, they realized that it was fraught with peril and they always backed off the implementations so in, in every other protocol and in, in RTP and, and everything else, people back off of sharding out the layers into their own transports and they want to keep the multiplex to the same transport. Um, and, and I have a fear that mock, if it's if it tries that that sharding again, it's gonna face all the same problems and it'll die and people will go back to single track um, for the same reasons that it, it happened before. So I'd like to find a good solution even within single track if we can. I think as a, just a thought experiment, I'd love to see layer proposed, like instead of like bed of group layer object, because that's what I, I've done. Like I've written up a draft with layer in it and I just realized it's just redundant. But um, I'd like to see that personally, instead of trying to, to have groups just have arbitrary orders within them. Can I just ask Mo, if, can you say for like one sentence or two, like what the problems were that caught, is it, is it related to, things being hard to synchronize between yeah, yeah, the two yeah. tracks. Yes, I can give it very quickly. So it, it, it's basically another layer of demultiplexing at the sender and remultiplexing at the receiver. And whenever you mux and remux, you have to have IDs, right? You, so now you have to have reference points to restitch these streams back together. 
And so it's a lot more, you, you add overhead of, now you have new identifiers in the streams to be able to remux them. And you have the overhead of sharding at the sender and remuxing at the receiver. So all those overheads end up making the solution too complex. And so people just go back to single track or flat single transport um, because it naturally is in sequence. Even, even though you want to describe, you, you want to describe in some metadata, here is information about layers, but they are still always in this sequence. There really is a single container sequenced for the entire video stream, but there's just some differential metadata about each one of these objects in that sequence. So it doesn't make sense to put them in their own sequence number space, their own IDs, their own group IDs and all that, because they really are still sequenced. You have to go back and reinsert some application level sequence to put them back into the right order again. I see. Okay. Um, I just, so we have eight minutes left and uh, there's three people in queue. So we should, um, let's just keep, keep, please be brief, I guess. Uh, John. We're going to close the queue soon. All right, so very quickly, um, I said this at the interim, and I'll say it again. Your priorities have to be something that applies for everything that is in flight. Otherwise, you will always have this risk of priority inversion. So if you're considering that you might have things buffered in flight, and then you are switching priorities while it's in flight, then you're going to have this problem. Um, the only way to avoid it is to explicitly have enough priorities that you can prioritize uh, um, all the things that you're prioritizing. But I think there's a second second problem here, which Mo is pointing out that we might need to have a different level of abstraction inside of tracks that you're prioritizing. I would say that you take this apart as a separate issue. If we can agree on this and let's talk about the layering as a, 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 a another one and we can come back and iterate on this priority scheme, let's come back to it. I think we can make an issue on this one and 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 move past it for now and we can come back to it later. That's my proposal. OK, I'm just going to think I think it's a very reasonable proposal, which is like we recognize that there may be a problem doing the kind of temporal scalability in a single track with the algorithm we described here. The proposal is we take PR forward anyway and open an issue to track that separately. Um, so if you think that's really, really bad idea and we, we need to instead stop and solve for that first um, before we make progress on the PR, please speak to that point. OK, next. Yeah, no, I guess like my observation is that, that there is an interesting asymmetry would do this, this this way where subscriber specifies priority for entire track and then will let the publisher have a more fine grained control. But that I guess makes sense and that's a good a good point in favor of thinking of this as a tuple and not as like subscriber overrides the publisher choice. Uh, I think this is fine. Uh, I, I think that if you use trim per object and do something like that, that would just work fine. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, thanks, Suhas. Uh, on the uh, SVC, um, we did submit a mock usage draft that talks about how can we solve SVC in multiple way, a couple of ways and and concerns and 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 if I, that to, to, for, for the application simplicity, the easiest way was to think about it each SVC uh, layer to be a track, uh, and that would give uh, the, the application uh, API surface the simul cache and SVC look exactly same. It does not change anything. Between. Yes. As Mo pointed out, there's some challenges in um, how how do we take the stream coming from three different tracks and put it together for the for the decoder? That's extra logic that the client uh, end client has to deal with uh, to put things in order, especially when there are multiple um, uh, uh, objects of each layer coming in. Uh, that that's that's the complexity that we need to accept upon if you go with that approach. Um, and and I kind of going going for for the time being. Uh, Going with what we have on, on general direction seems to be fine, um, and there definitely we need to think about uh, if we support multiple uh, priorities like like this is this this is called as like a, a MRST in RTP, which is like multiple uh, streams in one transport versus multiple streams across multiple transports, which is what uh, uh, track per SVC basically uh, maps to. Um, we, we we need to probably think more. It's, I don't think so. 
uh, over this call, we can come come up with a solution that would work uh, satisfactorily. So I would I would I would say like if based on screen mapping, if you go well, the current proposal based on screen mapping, if you find multiple publishers um, and you pick the priority from what you see for latest for the government uh, latest um, uh, for the current mapping should should um, kind of uh, help with most of the use cases that we have. Okay, Mel. He was close. So the, as as worded as worded currently on on this slide, I think everything is fine. The, the 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 change that people were talking about now was instead of the highest priority that a, that a original publisher has the highest priority object that original publisher has published. Instead of that, they want to say what's the latest object that a, a original publisher published. That use case only helps the case where a publisher wants to down prioritize reprioritize dynamically in the middle of a track retroactively to other stuff that's already been sent and prioritized on that track i don't think that's a valid use case i don't think that's a use case that we should bend to support the, the even if you want to retroactively up prioritize something this algorithm still works fine for that if you want to retroactively downgrade a track that's where this doesn't work right but i don't think that's a use case that should break the other use cases that are more important, like temporal scalability. And the fact that the, the publisher published an object with a certain priority, I don't think it should be overridden later by another priority on a, on a subsequent object. So Mo, the problem with this slide is that it's missing a, a case that the code has to handle, which is the subscriber priorities are equal. The track has specified multiple publisher priorities, presumably for two different groups. And also there is some either a different setting, which has either we're going groups are ascending or they're descending, and we don't understand how to resolve this conflict. And no, but we've that's already that's said that because... objects are always sent in ascending order anyway. So that may that by itself may be breaking your use case of stream per object. No, because this, like John has said, if we think in terms of objects in the canonical mock model, there's a there's already a priority in the canonical object. So this algorithm is talking about the priority of the canonical objects field for publisher and subscriber. If all the subscribers are equal, and then the publisher's priorities for the canonical object, whether it came on a group or a track or a object basis, that's what this is, that's what this is ranking by. So if the publisher published any object that's high priority, it doesn't matter how it published it that should be what gets selected that's what queues up that track for selection over the other tracks okay we're sort of out of time so i can't debate with you live here but i will maybe like send you an email to try to explain why i think that what if this slide is not sufficient and the pr is trying to address the, a particular case um that we do need to have a solution for um so uh i hope everyone got a chance to voice all the there's no other concerns with the pr except the issues that we discussed here uh, if there are, please raise them probably in an email to the list um, so that everyone's aware. Maybe I'm following the PR. Um, otherwise, Ian will take forward what we have described here, update the PR, and then hopefully we'll be landing it. As a reminder that there's not an interim next Wednesday, and our next interim is going to be a week from Monday at the same time, which is the draft deadline, uh, at which time we're hoping to um, land well, hopefully at least this priority pr um i will say there was also an action item from the about we don't have anything in there about delivery timeouts so it was something we spent time discussing and i think jana and somebody else agreed to write a pr on delivery timeouts so um i can check the yeah answer. i was supposed to write a pr on, on i was going to work on it today um, okay that's, that'll be excellent. We have that. Um, also, we can discuss asynchronously and and hopefully uh, achieve yeah, a great. I don't know what it was, but I'll, I'll yes. And also, if I remember correctly, there's something assigned to me. Do you, do you remember which one was that? Um, I I don't know if Ian, you happen. I, I know I went through the list of PRs. It got, it got kind of subsumed into the. Oh, perfect. It, it was designed to the two of us, and then it got kind of subsumed. I think it was actually the discussion point around what to do about upstream like how to use prioritization upstream when you're a relay i think it might have been that one but i'm not sure um alan actually had notes i i, I took notes on all the prs and i sent them to ian yesterday but i well I, I can't look at that screen right now but we can double check to us yeah. but i think ian looked at everything it was like the only one that was outstanding that still needed some text i think was the timeouts yeah it it made sense to subsume most of the functionality into the one pr that i sent out and then leave i think this 
expiration delivery timeout concept into a separate PR. Seem very yeah. separable. Totally makes sense. Perfect. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jordy, for scribing. Please, everyone, get a, take a look at the notes. Make sure that they reflect um, your understanding as well. Uh, and we will uh, see you in a week and a half. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Cheers.